Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to talk about CSS simple selectors. Now, whenever we want to apply any styles on any element uh, in the HTML, again, we need selectors. But selectors do not just like, they're not limited to name selectors or element selectors that we've been talking about. There are actually quite a lot of selectors in CSS because in CSS, if you do not do the selection part nothing else actually makes sense so it it does make sense it does make sense that css selectors are like a broad topic in css so i'm going to create a section in here and i'm going to within the section i'm going to create an h1 i'm going to give it a class and i'm going to say class of title now if you're thinking okay what name should i give to my classes think uh, take a look at your element what should be the name of it, this element? Let's say it is a heading. So technically it is a title. You can just say title. Python uh, boot camp. And then we have a paragraph, which I'm just going to give it a class of, because it is a paragraph, I'm just going to give it a class of para. But sometimes you need to provide more info. I'm going to say you will learn uh, Python from zero to advanced right so there we go we have linked to our css so let's just dive in so we are we are going to cover all these uh, different types so first element or name selectors refer to selecting any element by its name so i'm going to say body which is the name of the element how do we know because it is the first word in the opening tag body selecting it using the element name element or name selector i'm going to change the font family and throughout these lectures i'm introducing to you new css properties new css declarations as well because there are literally like thousands of them so if you save that this is going to change the font family for this now you can see it, it is now sans serif font family that is the um uh, that was the uh, uh, element selectors. I do have to provide this with an ID so we, so I can demonstrate for you the uh, um, how the ID selector works. I'm gonna say uh, just say course, course. Just I'm gonna say course. So how do ID selectors work? First, you're gonna provide the hash sign, the number sign, the hashtag, whatever you wanna call it, and then you're gonna provide the name of that the value for that attribute so the id what is the value or what is the name it is course you just have to provide that there and then open declaration block and you can basically do whatever you want in here let's say uh you want to grab uh this sec this section to and you want to provide it with some padding 25 pixel padding is going to prov we're just going to provide some space around the content so if I save that, you can see that now we have some space around the content. We're going to take a look at padding uh, later on, don't worry. Then using the class selectors, I'm going to grab the title. So class is denoted by dot, then the name of the class, which is title. Let's take a look at that. There we go. And let's say I want to increase the font size to 35 pixels. And now you can see it is bigger. Uh, we do have a universal selector which selects all the elements so if I say star this selects everything and if I say margin which is the space or distance outside an element outside an elements um, box something like that then if you set it to zero you can see now uh, uh, every element I should have probably told you this in the beginning every element in html it has some default styling which are applied by the browser one of those styling is margin the other one is padding so a common practice is to remove the default styling applied by the browser and apply new styles why because we want to be in control of adding spaces or styles to our website now, if I comment this one out, I'm just going to very quickly show that to you. So inside the inspect, I'm going to bring this up. Let's select this H1. Now, when I select it, you're going to see this, uh, I don't know, orange, gray, uh, brownish kind of area. 
on the top and the bottom, that signifies or denotes the margin, right? So if you come in to compute it, you can see that the padding will have color green. So if I select the section, you can see that we have some light green color. So let me just come down here. There we go. So if I select this section, you can see that this is the green color. It means that this section has some padding and it is denoted by green. Then we have uh, the border, then we have the margin. So this is how these work. First, we have the content. We know what the content is, right? The content comes from HTML. You will learn Python is the content. Then we have the padding, which is right outside the content. Then we have border, which is outside the padding. Then we have margin, which is outside the border. Now, uh, uh, where are the browser styles? So if I grab the H1, you can see these, these which are down below here. How can I bring this up? I can't. So these, these are all the browser styles applied. If you click on show all, these are all of them. So by default, this title has some margin. How much is the margin? So let's go to M. These are all CSS styles. There is a lot of them. So margin, there we go. So margin bottom, 29.05 pixels. Margin left zero, margin right zero, margin top, 29.05 pixels. So 29 pixels is the default margin applied by the browser because we have not added anything. But the universal selector can remove all of those. So if I do that and if I come to our H1 now, if I come here, so every margin has to be zero now. There we go. So you can see margin top, left, uh, right, left, and bottom, they're all zero. So we had margin top, which is now zero, and margin bottom, which is now zero. So these are all the styles which are applied by default using by the browser. Everything is applied by the browser. We as developers, we apply new styles and or change the default styles just to make them suit our own needs something like that and uh, eventually using the grouping selector the grouping selector is going to select more than one element at the same time so i'm going to select the title using its class then provide a comma hit enter and then i'm going to provide and grab the para using its class and i'm going to open up this declaration block the benefit in grouping selectors is that if you want to apply same styles on more than one element, you should group them to keep the dry to keep following the dry principle. Don't repeat yourself. So let's say we want to provide a margin of 10 pixels for both of the elements. You can see there is some space. Um, I'm going to provide some padding, 15 pixels. There we go. So now, if you do not use the grouping selector, what you would have to do is you're going to do title and repeat these two inside the title, and then you are going to have dot para, and then you would repeat them there as well. So which way is better? I'm sure you, are, you we conclude that this way is better. Instead of copy pasting and like repeating ourselves, we basically group our selectors. And this grouping only works if the styles are the same. So if you want to apply different styles, you should not group your selectors. That's it for this lecture. See you in the next one.